Welcome back to section two of chapter six. In this section, we are going to continue looking at vectors. Uh, this won't have as many topics as that first section did, uh, but they're a little bit tougher. A little bit. Kind of, maybe. The projections are a little bit tougher. Um, but it uses a lot of what we saw in that first section. Um, but we're going to be looking at the dot product of vectors. A dot product is one of the ways that we can multiply two vectors together. Um, and it has some applications that we will see. So our learning targets, we're going to determine dot products of vectors. We're going to use dot products to find the magnitude of a vector, calculate the angle between vectors, determine whether vectors are orthogonal. That's a big fancy word that basically means perpendicular. It's a little bit more than perpendicular. It's like three dimensional perpendicular, but right now we're on a plane. And so it's perpendicular. Um, and then find the project projection of one vector onto another. And so the first thing we're looking at is the dot product. What is the dot product? Well, if we wanna find the dot product between two vectors, Let's say we have vector u is 2, 3, and vector v is negative 1, 4. The dot product, u dot v, we're going to multiply together the two x components. So we have two times negative one, and we're gonna multiply it together the two y components, three times four, and then we are going to add those together. And so u dot v is negative two plus 12, u dot v is 10. Notice it is not negative two comma 12. That would be the most common wrong answer I get for this. Um, people get it all the way down to the very last step and then they just don't add the two numbers together. Someone's gonna do it. Don't be that guy. Let someone else be that guy. Um, but what we get when we take the dot product is we get a scalar. This is a number, notice it's not a vector anymore. It's not something comma something. It's just a scalar, it's just a number. But that's how to find the dot product. It's not particularly complicated, just x times x plus y times y. And you're done. Um, in the um, the uh, other notation, it just looks like this, where we have, or I guess this is a general notation, this is a formula. Uh, u1 comma u2 and v1 comma v2 is just u1 v1 plus u2 v2. Um, we have some properties of the dot products. And basically these properties are things that you would want to do with them anyway. If you think that it should work, it probably will. Um, the first one, u dot v is the same as v dot u. If we switch the order, we get the same thing. If you look at how we found the dot product, it doesn't matter whether it was two times negative one or negative one times two, and three times four or four times three. So that should make sense. Um, if we dotted u with itself, we would have, say u is a comma b, we'd have a squared plus b squared. Well, that is almost the magnitude. The magnitude was a square root of a squared plus b squared. So if we dot it with itself, we get the magnitude squared. So we could find the magnitude by using a dot product. Now, is that easier? It, it's actually the same. If you have a vector, finding the dot product and then square rooting is exactly the same as finding the magnitude the way we did last time. Um, what this can help us with is if we know the dot product, then we can find the magnitude by just square rooting it. Um, the zero vector dot u equals zero. Just the number zero, not a zero vector. Remember the zero vector was zero comma zero. So if we have zero times a plus zero times b, well, that's just zero. Um, four, if we're dotting into a sum, 
we can distribute that. So u dot v plus w is u dot v plus u dot w. Um, and same thing if it was on the other side, u plus v dot w is u dot w plus v dot w. Um, and if we're multiplying a dot product by a constant, uh, we can multiply either of the two vectors by the constant, um, not both of them, but we can multiply either of the two. Um, and so those are just some of the products uh, that we can use with dot products. Some of the properties we can use with dot products. So one of the uses for these is the angle between two vectors. We have um, the vector u and vector v, u and v, and then we can find the angle there between them. The cosine of that angle is going to be u dot v divided by their two magnitudes. So if we had u was 2 comma 3 and v was negative 1 comma 4, we can find the magnitude of u. It's going to be the square root of 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 plus 9 is 13, and the magnitude of v. 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 16, so we have square root of 17. So we have cosine of theta is going to be u dot v. So that's going to be 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 4 over root 13 times root 17. We figured out that that upper value was 10. So we have 10 over root 13, root 17. That's just a number. So we can find that. I'm going to go with root 13 times root 17, making sure that we don't have that root 17 inside of the uh, root 13. Then 10 divided by that number. That was like a 14.86, so we get about 0.6726. So cosine of that was about 0.67267. And then we go inverse cosine. And get the angle between these is 47.726 degrees. Um, and that can be useful. So one of the things, we don't have to worry about it getting bigger than 180 because the angle between them, it doesn't matter what order you're going in, uv or vu, um, the angle between them is going to be the one that's less than 180. Um, but we can find that angle. Uh, Oh, then orthogonal vectors. Uh, so it's orthogonal, it's perpendicular if u dot v equals zero. Because then we'd have zero over, it doesn't matter what the magnitudes are, it would be zero. So cosine of theta equals zero. Well, cosine of what equals zero, that would be a 90 degree angle. So um, one of the things we can do is we can prove that two things are orthogonal. So let's say u equals 2, 3, and v equals negative 6, 4. We can prove that these are orthogonal, so we just find the dot product. So u dot v is going to be 2 times negative 6 plus 3 times 4, that's negative 12, 
plus positive 12, which is 0. So u and v are orthogonal. And so that's how you can show that two things are orthogonal, or show or proof. Um, because again, if we plug that in over here, we'd have zero over something at zero. Inverse cosine gives us 90 degrees, which is perpendicular, um, which is orthogonal. Um, and again, orthogonal means perpendicular, but more than. Like perpendicular, you can have two lines that are perpendicular. Um, for orthogonal, you can have like a line and a plane. Um, you can have two planes. You can have you can have more things. It's just like it's a bigger perpendicular. So, and we'll talk more about that later on this year. Um, projecting one vector onto another and apparently work because I forgot to fade that in. Um, so projections is when we take our we have one vector and then we move it nine so it hits 90 degrees to another and it gets that that distance it's not the same magnitude as that original pq but it's to the 90 degree point so it's that it's that part of the component um and then going in that same direction is rs so a lot of times we'll use um, this for force or um, like for well force for gravity um, because we'll we have the um, the downward force of gravity but we might be standing on a slope and so we have to do a little projection uh, the formula for that is so we have the projection of u onto v it's u dot v over the magnitude of v squared which is v dot v and then times v so it could also be written as u dot v over v dot v times v now this both of those are dot products so that's a scalar so it's a scalar times vector v which is what shortens it to only that part or maybe it lengthens it but it's going to be along that same that same vector we're just expanding it um, so if we had two we have u is six two v is five negative five So the projection of u onto v is going to be u dot v. So we have 6 times 5 is 30 minus 10 over 5 times 5 is 25 plus negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. And then we're going to dot it with v. So 30 minus 10 is 20 over 50. So 20 over 50 is just 2 fifths times 5 comma negative 5, which we can take in to get 2 comma negative 2. So that would be the projection of u onto v. Um, and that again is used when we have a lot of times it's when we have gravity because gravity is going down, but we're on a slant. And so you have to figure out what is the force of gravity going on the slant um, and then work. Uh, there might be a couple work type questions. Uh, work is just force times the the vector that you want to go in, um, which is the magnitude of the force vector times magnitude of the um, the direction vector, um, then times the cosine of that angle in between them. Um, if they're going in the same direction, the angle in between them is zero, 
and the cosine of zero is is one. So it would be just the two magnitudes if it's going in the same direction. Um, so if you have just like a weight on a chain, the gravity is pulling down the chain, um, you would just multiply the two magnitudes. Um, but if it's tied over off to the side, you have to deal with that angle. So um, this is a minor part of the topic. Um, generally speaking, it's just dot products. So um, you're working on dot products, dot products, dot products, um, and finding the angle in between the two vectors. So I will see you in class, but until then, keep working problems, keep asking questions, and as always, happy mathing.